Hello and welcome to part one of, I think I named this Jasper Mountain. So with that, let's get started with part one, which is lock in. And we cover the whole canvas with uh, value color. It's thin paint, so if you've got thick paint, scrape it off. So what I do is get my palette knife and get up there and scrape it off or push it down. But keep it thin because we're going to work on top of it. It's going to sit for 24 hours while I think of what I'm going to do in part two. But the important thing is uh, cover this canvas with value color. I show you how to do that step by step. All right, this is a new series. I'm George Call, and I can't wait to get into this painting. All right, so paint with your friends, get outside and paint, get critiques, and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. Keep painting. That's the key to all this, and get some instruction. All right, with that, enough of me talking. Let's get to part one. Thanks for coming by. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome to a new series called Jasper Mountain. Okay, so I took this uh, reference some time back, and I uh, can't even remember where I took it, but it's in my library. You know, those cameras hold all kinds of thousands of photographs. So I'm working on a uh, 18 by 22, I believe, and um, I'm working on canvas on gator board. Got my paints laid out and ready to go. What I'm going to do, I might stop the camera a few times to um, let some uh, washes dry. And uh, so I'm going to lay on a wash and um, have a foundation to, to work on top of. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I know that looking at my reference, that it's lighter up here and it's darker down here. And I believe, let's make that solid, I believe that the, uh, the darks are a little bit below center. So let me at least figure out where center is going to be. And I'm going to go with some blue and a little bit of transparent oxide red and some Gamsol, some thin. It's a little too thick there. And I'm going to go below center here somewhere in here. I still think we're below center. Somewhere in there. So this is going to be the dark stuff. This will be the light stuff. And I think we're going to have some sort of a... Let me get a little bit bluer here. So here is the whoop whoop and off the canvas, I think. Okay. And then I'm going to have trees in here and a lot of foreground stuff going on in here. All right, I might even lower the trees up in this area. And we'll go ahead and get started. So, I'm going to keep the white out of here for now. It'll dry a little quicker. And start with some blue. And I think we've already got some transparent oxide red in there. And I'm going to use, looks like, a number 8 rosemary 279. So I know that we're going to have some sort of dark stuff in here. And other stuff in here. I just added more Gamsol. And in the top, I'm going to go more blue. Got the cobalt. So, and I'm going to use that up in here. And for the sky, I'm going to use some sort of ceruleum. So let me get some ceruleum. Damsel. 
and I'll be using that up in here. So for the sake of time, I'm going to turn off the camera and um, we will restart it here when I get this all covered in and I'll dry it a little bit too. All right, so stand by for the next part. Hey, welcome back. Here we took a little break and uh, worked on uh, just putting thin washes down here on the canvas. I let it dry for about an hour and I'm ready to start again. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> Where to start? I think what I'd like to do is try to get some more form up here. I feel okay with, you know, what I can do down here. I always try to start with my hardest thing. And I think my hardest thing might be to get this thing uh, worked on up here. It's so soft. So um, I'm going to start up there and work on that. So with that, I'm going to make a blue-gray. <clears throat> and I want to get some softer, lighter gray than I have out there. And the <clears throat> softer, lighter gray I have is Portland Gray by Gamblin. And that's what I'm using. I have my own trusty gray also, which is Cold Gray by Rembrandt 717. I think I'm going to go probably with the lighter stuff. So let's start with the mixture. So I know out here it's got to be a little more dark, and here it's going to be more green. This will be more blue-gray. This will be more uh, green-gray. So <clears throat> let's start with some cobalt. And let's start with some light gray. Cobalt. Light gray. Little bit more cobalt in there. And just a touch of alizarin. And we'll see if that's too dark or too light. And I'm going to use a soft brush, a Master Touch Flat number 10. And I'll just loosen my brush up just a little bit with some Gamsol. Just a little bit more in here. And I think so far that might be good. Boy, I thought I made enough product, but I certainly did not. So I'll work on the outline first. See if I run out. And I'm sure I'm running out quick. So let's see if I can duplicate that. So that's going to be cobalt, light gray, light gray, cobalt, just a touch of game soul. And yeah, let's get hopping. Oh boy, perfect match. Just get a little bit of a cam so you can see I'm keeping this product very thin. And I know there's a lot going on up here, but I think I just want to get, as my first teacher called it, the mother color in. The basic color. This up pretty quick too. Now on top of that, I'm going to start mixing some green, and I'm going to use some emerald green to start with. This emerald green is a uh, gambling product, and I'm going to throw some light gray on there. More, more green. 
And I'm going to throw in some Hansa Yellow Medium. And I'm mixing it very thoroughly. I'm going to add just a little gam salt to it. Then up just a little bit. It's too dark. I'm going to add some white. Some <clears throat> Aussie yellow medium and some emerald. That's more to my liking. It's still a little dark, but it's okay. I'm okay with some darker values for base base coats. Again, I'm using some gam salt to thin it down. Getting ready for us. my art show that I've been part of for many years. It's the Denver Art Students League. It's where I kind of learn my trade. I think I'm a little too much with the uh, green. I'm going to have to bring the gray down a little farther. So let me see if I can get away with this. Maybe. And I'll lighten it a little bit with my paper towel. And let me get back and make a judgment from back here. <clears throat> I think we're coming about right. Now what I see up here are some lighter spots up in the upper gray. So I'm just going to make light gray, and I'm going to add some titanium white. Titanium white. And I'll add a touch of green to it. Just a little bit of green. And I'll start making some of those lighter areas up in here. A little too light, so I'm going back into my little bit darker gray mixture. And working some of these lights up and they come up from the, the green. Some of them need to be knocked down a little. Okay. Let's go back. There's some darker gray that comes through here. Let me make some gray right in through here. Add some cobalt to it. Cobalt. Cobalt. Gray. I added just a little bit of darker gray. You can see that from the uh, overhead. Gray. Blue. Would help if I had enough product out. So I'm adding more cobalt to my palette. I know you're saying, aren't you getting a little bit into detail too much? Well, you're right. But I like to get these shapes with a few value changes in them, if I can. There's a lot of light up in here, and some green. I have to 
get some more green up in there. And I'm going to carry the cobalt and gray over a little bit in the green. You can see it right up in here in the reference. And I hope you subscribe to my website so that you can I send these out every week when I, you know, prior to my painting. Darker. Come on. Too dark. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. And I see it a little darker up on top. So I'm going to go blue, dark gray, blue. This is the cobalt still. I see it kind of in this area, right up in the topper, top areas. More cobalt, more darker gray. Stay out of the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Cobalt. Gray. Boy, I've been using the cobalt on this. Let me get back here. Take a look. Now, what I see next is lightening up this green down here. So I'm cleaning my brush with Gamsol, squeezing it inside my paper towel, and I'm going to throw some Hansa green, like some Hansa yellow medium. And set emerald and some white, and some white, a little bit of gray. And I'm going to put that in the lower side of the painting. I have two cups of Gamsol. One's the little bit, these little gray cups. They're something you get at the kitchen stores. And I use one for my first dip to really clean my brush. And the second one, if I'm looking for clean Gamsol to throw into a mixture, I have the second pot for that. And now you can see the lighter mixture going in here. And I'm going to put some of that up in various places, too. I mixed a little bit darker. That's a little too dark. But nonetheless, it's there. I can work with it. I think the angle of this hill comes this way, and it's getting more light. And that's why the upper part's a little darker greener and the second part is more yellow green. And again, let me get some, reinforce some of my blues down here. And then let's get to the foreground. Whew, that kept me busy. Alright, I'm cleaning my brush, I'm getting away, looking at this creation. And now, let's get some, let me look at this reference I've got, sorry for the back here, and what a beautiful reference, I can't even remember where I took it, well I have, I think in my phone and in my computer I have 22 or 24,000 for references, and that's after eliminating a lot of them, because they were, you know, not good shots. But a lot of stuff I, you know, some 10 years ago, I, I said, I don't see what the interest is there. Well, now I go, hey, that's pr pretty interesting. So be careful getting rid of your 
old photographs, especially if you think they're too hard to paint, because as you mature as an artist, you go, hey, that is a really, really nice reference. All right, let me see what I can do here. Start working in foreground. So, mixture time. Let's go blue, brown, or I'm sorry, transparent oxide red. And I'm going to get some, mix in some of uh, this Rembrandt uh, Viridian 616. It's not such a harsh Viridian. I like it. All right. Boy, I didn't make enough product, that's for sure. Blue. Mm -hmm. Some transparent oxide red, viridian. And let's go in right in here. Need a little bit of gamsol. And I'm going to be working on trees. See how I, I do a horizontal and then I stop and do a jiggle? See, it looks like trees, just like the reference. I think I'm going to make them taller than I'm doing right now. So there we go. I think that's about right. And in here they kind of go back. There's a slight opening back in here. And then they get large again right in here. Okay, I need more green, more ultra blue, transparent oxide red. Add a little gold to it. It's yellow ochre gold. Oh, that gold sure added some nice touch to it. I'm going to make these trees even bigger. Come on. Go for it. And there's a lake up here I want to maybe increase the size of. It's a pretty small lake. It's kind of artistic license. We can make changes. My students are always saying, what's that way in the reference? Well, it's still important to balance out your pain. The lake's too small, make it bigger. So let's do this. And then there's some trees in front. And I think I'll put one, instead of smack dab in the middle, I'll move it over just a little bit and put him in. And instead of having one big one there, let me put some smaller guys in here too. And maybe one coming down on this side. I might even come down even farther. And what I think I see is I'm going to have some sort of a <coughs> lead in coming this way. I can kind of see that in the reference, some sort of a angle there. And I'll see if I can, that's too flat. I'm going to make it this way and this way, and I'll make more bushes over here, and more trees. That's need more blue. Let's get some gold in there too. Let's bring oxide red. <clears throat> here we go. Now we're looking like something. All right, so you get the idea on the base. All right, so the base is not done. It's still a little dark, but it still needs some story here. Look at all this over here. So as it goes back, I want to make it a little lighter, and I want to put a lake in here too. So we'll put a, maybe a lake in here, and then have it come through the trees in a few areas. 
All right, so with that, let's get a sky color in there. I'm going to change brush so I don't have to keep cleaning this so vigorously. And I will get a number of four, it looks like. It's a soft rosemary. It's a 279 long flat. All right, let's see what I can do here with this. Keeping an eye on my time. Six minutes! Oh my gosh. I'll get some. Looks like I've just got some ceruleum on here. And I will just for now slap that in there. And I'm going to have it peek through the trees like this. Yes, I'm making this totally up. I'm expanding the size of the lake just by having some peekaboo holes here. And I'll bring it forward. And make that a little bit more interesting. Now I need some lighter color on the base and I need more design over here. So I'm going to put more bushes over on this side. So I'm going to get some gold in here. So it's ultra. Gold, Ultra, Transparent Oxide Red, and some of that Viridian Green. And I'm going to start putting these sages in here. I need a good dark. Then I can work around them. So here we go. Any more red on the base. As I come forward, I want the bases a little darker, add a little red to it. And I'll put a tree there, small trees. But basically, up in here, I'm going to put some bushes. And then I got to put some surrounding stuff in there. So I'm going to lighten that up a little bit with a gray. I should have used a bigger brush, but I don't have that in my hand at this time. And you can see now I'm just going to be lightening up this foreground here a little bit with this grayer, greener stuff. And I want you to work on that off camera to fill that up, okay? Because that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to also do that on this side here, but here I want to tell a different story. I want to lighten that up with a kind of a green. So let's go with um, this uh, emerald, and I'm going to get some cobalt in there. I'm sorry, cerulean, 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 emerald. And I'm mixing it on top of the old mixtures to keep it on the dark side. And I'm going to put that in a few places up in here and here. You can kind of see something to that effect in the, in the reference. So I'll be using that. Okay, let me get back and see how that works. Put it on pretty thin, and I think it'll work. It might be a little too light, so let me darken that just a little bit. I'm going to throw some ultra in there. Ultra blue. Emerald. And I'm adding just a little bit of my clean Gamsol into that mixture. And let's see what this does. And I'll add some of that right in here. There's some light on that hill. And I'm being inspired by looking at the, at the reference there. Now I want to go back to my darker mixture. So I'm going to go back to grays. 
add a little bit of gold to it. And this time I'm adding some olive. I think that's just a dead color. That's too much like my gold. Forget that emerald. And let's go back into that viridian we had before. And that uh, viridian is the uh, 616 Rembrandt. Okay, let's get in here. Whew, been busy. And again, I should have used a bigger brush. I'd be getting down the road quicker. And so I'll be doing this off camera too, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. You can start to see the geometry of my foreground. Yes, it's working. Thank you. What I might do is put sunlight on some of the back trees too, but I can't do it right now. I don't have the time. I'm going to spend my time filling in all these gray areas. But I do need more bushes, so I better figure out where the base of the bushes are before I start painting around future shapes. So I'm going to get some Viridian, some co uh, Ultra Blue, Transparent Oxide Red, and add some red to it. Red. It's red alizarin I'm using, and I'll be, it's really a good dog. And I'm going to be telling the story of where my uh, bushes are going to be. Sorry for that noisy, but that's my timer, and I need to bring this to an end. All right, so do a little work on this thing off camera, and I'll be filling in these gaps like I just said I would do. All right, see you in part two. Thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.